Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing my work with the RP2350. Last time we were able to run some simple C programs on the new Raspberry Pi Pico 2 using VS Code. I also compared both core types of the Pico 2 to the original Pico using a simple mathematical program. What I discovered is I don't much care for VS Code. I want something different. So why don't you join me as we search for an alternative to VS Code for compiling Pico 2 programs? From my casual observation on the web, it seems some people like VS Code and some really hate it. I guess I'm closer to the latter camp. If you're doing production coding, it's probably fine, but to me it appears pretty fragile. It wants to automate many of the tasks and therein lies the rub. I'm not experienced with it, so when it breaks, I don't know what to do. And I don't want to take the time to learn it, so I probably won't get any better. I would settled on CMake and NMake on my Windows 10 machine for C and assembly programs for the original Pico. I like understanding what happens at each step. However, when I compiled Doom, I found I couldn't use my Windows setup. I had to switch to my Raspberry Pi 5. See Chapter 12 of the Bare Metal Adventures. I'll leave a link in the description below. For the Pico 2, I thought I'd try using the Pi 5 the same way I used the Windows machine for the original Pico. It took a bit of researching, but here's how I configured my Raspberry Pi 5, which is running Raspberry Pi OS. First, I renamed the original Pico directory that I used to compile Doom to Pico Legacy, so I could demonstrate a fresh install of the Pico toolchain. Note that this new toolchain works for both the original Pico and the new Pico 2. Referring to getting started with the Raspberry Pi Pico series, Appendix C, I manually configured the Raspberry Pi 5 using the Pico setup script. This script creates a directory called Pico in the folder where you run the Pico setup script, installs required dependencies, downloads the Pico SDK, Pico examples, Pico extras, and Pico playground repositories defines various paths in your bash RC, and builds various examples and tools for use with the Pico. Starting in my home directory, I'll run sudo app install wget to install wget. You might have to enter your password. Then I'll use wget to point to the GitHub location of the Pico setup script. The next command allows anyone to execute the Pico setup script. Then finally, we run the Pico setup script. 15 minutes later. After the script finishes, disable the login shell over the serial port and enable the serial port. Next, reboot the Pi. Looking at the Pico folder, we see that the Pico SDK, various program examples, and various tools have been installed. However, the GNU compiler that is included in the version of Raspberry Pi OS at the time of this video does not include support for Hazard 3 RISC-V cores. To get support for the RISC-V processors, we need to navigate to the Pico SDK Tools directory of the Raspberry Pi GitHub repository. I'll leave a link in the description below. From the GitHub page, click on Releases. Then go to version 2.0.0-2 and select the RISC-V toolchain for the 64-bit ARM architecture of Linux. This will download the compressed folder into the downloads directory in the Raspberry Pi. Where you install the RISC-V toolchain can make your life a little easier. Initially, I had installed the toolchain into the Pico SDK tools directory but then I had to add an additional path statement into the CMake statement to change its Pico toolchain path whenever I wanted to use RISC-V. To make life easier, I re-extracted the RISC-V toolchain into the root USR directory. Since the Pico tools already look there for the ARM toolchain, I don't have to change the path when I want to use the RISC-V toolchain. Okay, now we're ready to compile a project. I want to compare the VGA graphics capability between the original Pico and the Pico 2. For that, I'm going to use the examples in the Pico Playground folder that I downloaded earlier. I had originally demonstrated the graphics capability of the original Pico in PIO Chronicles Episode 6. 
I'll leave a link in the description below. First, I'll navigate into the Pico Playground folder. Then I'll create three build directories, one each for the RP2040 ARM core, the RP2350 ARM core, and the RP2350 RISC-V core. Next, I'll navigate into the build folder for the RP2350 ARM core. Well, I'll issue the CMake command. The dash D Pico platforms equals RP2350-ARM-S tells the toolchain to compile for the ARM Cortex M33 cores. The double dot tells the toolchain to look in the next higher directory to grab the files it needs to complete the CMake process. After a couple of moments, the build folder has been populated with the files needed to perform the make process. Please note, if you need to rerun the CMake command for any reason, you must delete all the files in the associated build directory before running the command. Otherwise, the CMake cache in the folder will simply recreate the error. Next, we'll compile and link all the applications for the Pico Playground folder by running the make command from the build folder. This takes about six and a half minutes. I'll skip forward to the end. Now we can compile the applications for the other cores in the same manner. Simply navigate into the appropriate build directory and execute CMake dash D Pico platform equal RP2040 double dot for the Cortex M0 plus cores of the original Pico or CMake dash D Pico platform equals RP2350 dash risk 5 double dot for the hazard 3 risk cores in the Pico 2. Then follow with the make command for each case. Let's see what we got. For the RP2040, we have .uf2 files for all the scan video demos except for demo 2. For the RP2350, we have .uf2 files for all the scan video demos except for flash stream. However, there is no sprite demo for the RISC-V cores. You've already seen most of the demos in the PIO Chronicles Episode 6, but here's a new one, Demo 2, for the RP2350, running both on the ARM cores and then on the RISC-V cores. The Mandelbrot demonstration is particularly interesting. This is where the differences in core speed and configuration are really highlighted. All the other demonstrations manipulate a scanline buffer that must be accomplished in lockstep with the video vertical scan rate. Therefore, improvements in processor speed really can't be seen. They just result in more idle time for the processing core. However, in Mandelbrot, there's a screen buffer that the processing core can work on at full speed. In this comparison, for each core type, I'll time the display from the start until it reaches a particular point where the image stops its downward travel and starts moving up. The original Pico reaches that point in 271 seconds. The Pico 2 using the ARM cores reached that point in 81 seconds. And the RISC-V processor reaches it in 78 seconds. Other variables beside the processor type include static RAM size, processor clock speed, and the compiler with the ARM cores using GCC 12.2.1 and the RISC-V cores using GCC 14.2.1. I'm not sure what's causing the improvement, but the Pico 2 is significantly faster. Thanks for joining me today. This time we were able to move away from VS Code and compile and link Raspberry Pi provided Pico programs manually on a Raspberry Pi 5. I demonstrated that the Pico 2 can output very capable VGA video and is significantly faster than the original Pico. And surprisingly, the Hazard 3 cores compare very favorably with the Cortex M33 cores of the RP2350 in this application. Next time, I hope to develop the workflow to compile my own C programs as well as running Doom for the Pico 2, so stay tuned! If you like this video or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. 
See you soon.